So, so I am talking with Rushka and Rebecca, who have um, created a film about home education in South Africa that involved a lot of travel and speaking to a lot of people. Um, your image is a little glitchy, so hopefully we'll be able to hear you okay, because that's the most important part to hear from you. So um, please just tell us a little bit about yourselves, who you are, and what led to making this film. Okay, um, my name is Rushka Johnson. I'm the <clears throat> producer of Home Education Documentary and the co-director. And this is my daughter, Rebecca Breeze, and she's the filmmaker and she'll explain to you all the things that were involved in what she was doing with the documentary. And um, yeah, so we got funded to um, travel and to discover the heart of home education in our country. Um, and we thought it would be very fitting and work very well if we came from a background of home education, because then we could um, capture it in such a way where we knew that we knew about it and we had lived through it. Um, and then she can explain a little summary a bit more maybe of what her involvement was. Then yeah. I can answer questions. Yeah. So I was, I was home educated and then I've got two siblings, two younger siblings. So our whole family has been home educating. Um, I did um, all of the pre and post production processes of the filmmaking. So the filmmaking side, we had a very tiny, tiny, tiny crew, teeny tiny. We were crowdfunded, which we we're so grateful for, but um, we had a small crew to work with, um, which I enjoyed actually. Uh, we, I had an assistant cinematographer and then um, his mother, Camila, uh, was also involved in um, the, a bit of the organizing process um, and some things like that and we've known their family forever so it was very um yeah we'd all known each other for a while and it, so it was quite a personal project you know yeah um, yes so that was my involvement in it uh from my side yeah yeah and uh how long did it take you because i know you traveled all over and spoke to lots of people uh, and incidentally i saw you spoke to i think emily tucson and i actually know the tucson family so that was a bit interesting yes. to see someone. That's the family. That's that, is that the is that the yeah, is from family. Johannesburg? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So okay. So do you do? You, oh, oh well, we'll have a big catch up later then. So, so you related to them, <laughs> and I was very friendly with uh, the the aunt, uh, Julia. So okay. is that, hopefully we're on the right right track. <laughs> yeah. So oh, did you says, know how long it took? How long the whole process? Maybe I'll speak about. You can speak about post, and I'll speak about. Yeah, post. yeah. Like okay, from, so, maybe from the first from conception um, through to the, the first con, con. We explained it in the film, but I'll explain it again on this interview. So um, we decided that we would make it in. It's probably the end of two thousand and eighteen. Mm. Um, there have been uh, over the years of of home education, we have been asked so many questions about it and the kids and me and done talks and explain to people what it is, but it's very difficult to explain in a few amount of words. So um, that is one of the reasons that inspired making the documentary because it's much easier to see and to speak to lots of different people when you want to hear about something rather than just one person in a five minute conversation. So um, one of the reasons that inspired it was that let's answer all of these questions, but not with just ourselves. Let's get a bunch of other people from completely different walks of life and cultures mm -hmm. and across the country and let them answer from their perspective. And then let the, the, the viewer decide and learn from this experience and um, have a nice wide view of what it is. So that inspired it. And also because um, a lot of people who aren't home educated don't really understand, um, they are, are interested and curious, they might have preconceived ideas of what it is, or um, so it was also to shatter some myths and to explain some things about it. Um, and then another reason was that, it, um, you know, like um, when people don't understand, um, and there are laws that might be put in place to um, hinder freedoms. Um, it's good to have a grounding um, where people can base um, decisions on that is solid. Um, so 
Um, those were a few of the reasons why, and that was at the end of 2018 when we thought, no, let, let's make a documentary. We have what we need. Ruth, she's a filmmaker, you know, like let's just go and do this ourselves. Um, and the traveling aspect was over those three years, but we traveled around our country for about two weeks in total. Uh, flew um, jam packed. Yeah, we packed the travel into two weeks. Um, and then we did the other interviews and the things, traveling little bits in between. But the, the that part that you watch in the documentary of us traveling and getting in the car and driving and flying was probably over the span of about two weeks yeah. um, with a bit of filming in between. And then she's going to tell you about the post-production, which is actually the long part yes. of making yeah. a documentary. Yes, making those decisions <laughs> because you film literally... I don't know how many hours worth of footage you must have had. Yeah, hundreds, hundreds yeah. of hours, uh, yeah. a lot. We managed to gather a lot. Unfortunately, we could only stick so much in two hours, you know, mm. um, in a two-hour documentary. The, yeah, but we we, we tried our, our best to um, capture the essence of what the people were saying. Um, so there, there is, as or as most documentaries, there's stuff that we would have liked to be in there but isn't because there just wasn't space because there was yeah. just so much footage um mm -hmm. yeah so the filming process was like the easiest part post-production took two years um especially because it was just myself doing it so i handled all the post-production the editing um and everything that had to do with post-production we shot it and then we built the script afterwards so once we had shot all the footage um, I kind of laid out, well, not script because it's a documentary, yeah. but you have to have a base structure and like a, a bit of a direction that you're moving in. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like a solid narrative so things make sense and flow together properly. So that was done afterwards and that took quite a while. Um, and then once that framework was built, it was basically um, doing and redoing and molding and meshing until it it came out how we wanted it to come out. Yeah. Um, it was quite an experience. Um, yeah. yeah. So to put it in perspective, um, each person that you see on there, or each family interview is probably about an hour, an hour and a half. And you'll see that some of them are five minutes long. So you've got yeah. to, she had to, we had to, we did, we had to take an hour and a half of what they were saying, not miss the essence of what they want to say and what the important thing is that they want to get across. Okay, we couldn't yeah. miss that. Um, but cut it down from an hour and a half into five minutes. It was yeah. very, very difficult. And that's why it was so important, we, we felt, um, that people that were editing, because when you edit, when you edit something that somebody has said, you can change what they say. You can um, create, yes. your, have your own agenda and change what they say. So that's why we, we thought it's really important that we have lived through this we are coming from a place where we want to just show people what it is, but we understand what is going on. So yeah. we won't misinterpret what people are saying. Um, we, we really tried our best to make sure that we captured what it is that they were saying and the yeah. essence of what they're saying. And the, our goal was to honestly capture it, but from a place where we understood what is going on. Yeah. So yeah. that was really really difficult and because she's just been home educated her whole life um most of what they were saying you know you get you you can't click what it is that they, they're saying and being with the people because we we sat with the people for a long time and we interviewed them we, we spent the day with them we spent the night yeah, it did look like you ate, ate some wonderful meals with them <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my god <laughs> oh, yeah. the highlight yeah so, so, the, so the families that we went they they we stayed with them you know they like looked after us they fed us they were so sweet they were so gracious they were so um uh, yeah, they were very welcoming. Shane. Very welcoming. So, so we got to know them a bit. So, also yeah. in the editing, and because we had stayed with them, we had a feeling of who they were. Yeah. And you know, we mm. really didn't want to miss that out. Um, yes, that was quite important. You know, and I think the interesting and, and also, thing. <laughs> yeah. Now, I was going to say the interesting thing for me also is because it's in a South African context. It's a little different to hear. So the way children are able to play and be free outside in really engage with the outdoors 
you know, the water play, the, you know, the barefootedness of it, the, you know, that's yeah. so celebrated uh, to, to a large extent, which, I mean, it's there's kind of a little bit of an homage to that mm. kind of South African lifestyle, which, which, which children are able to enjoy. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I do miss that, I have to say, but, you know, just lovely uh, to see that. Um, because very, it's very South African. Oh. It's very much about this is what it's like here for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's all normal for us. Hey? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. that's what we wanted to. We wanted to get that because that we're not, we're not trying to, we're not yeah. trying to uh, push a message on anyone or push her this or push her anything. All it was was us just genuinely just <clears throat> looking around and seeing who's 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 there and who's doing what. And let's go see what they do and, and how they do it. Basically, yeah, mm -hmm. um, I have so to. I have, I have to. Well, I have to mention the kid is building his house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that child. Oh, wow. Oh, that, was, that was kind of amazing. So you sort of saw the whole spectrum. Some of those have got have gone the very academic route and some who have yeah. kind of chosen a more, uh, uh, you know, apprentice style almost yeah. learning alongside their parents. Yeah. And uh, it, you know, that was quite interesting, I thought. Yeah, it was important to capture the, because you try to explain to people when they ask you how you home educate, like they picture a classroom mm. and everyone learning the same thing and all have the same books and because that's what schools look like. So for somebody who hasn't seen it, um, it's very hard to get your head around how different people learn. So we 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 glad that that came across and we could show that because it's hard to explain. You have to see it. The children's learning styles are so different, yeah. and there's so many ways you can accommodate these different learning styles. And so if we capture that, we're very happy because that is one of the big things about home education that people struggle to understand. You know. So yeah, 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 and and uh, I think for your own families, actually experiencing that was in itself a learning experience definitely yes yeah because yeah, I, yeah. What yeah, did you we learned, yeah carry on sorry no um well um traveling together being together and doing things together you learn stuff about each other so we grew our relationship we had a good relationship before but it grew, you know, the respect that you get for one another. You see them working and yeah. and um, we learned to like follow each other and like mold with each other and because we were working closely together. Mm. So first of all, it's really nice doing things with people you love. Yeah. Second of all, you know them really well because she's been home educated. We've been with each other a lot. We know each other really well. We can flow with each other and sink in with each other. And then doing a project together, it's so much more fun for people who like doing things, you know, so doing things with people you love. So we learn things about each other. And then also we, even though we've been home educated forever, 23 years, she's 23. And we learned so much from people. We were so inspired, you know, by, we came back really, really inspired, you know, yeah. and because there's always more you can learn. There's always more that you can discover. So, Yes, we learned. I mean, that's from a, a relationship perspective, but I don't know if you want to, what you learned about film. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Well, that was, no. <laughs> no. But you learned. No one was showing me what to do on that. That was a whole learning experience. Yeah. So um, that was good for you. Yeah. Like no, we learned. had a great time. Yeah. Um, we had a really nice time. There were yeah. things that we didn't, we, we hadn't even, we hadn't seen before. Um, and learning about those things and then incorporating it into our own lives we did do that yeah whether it was unconsciously or yeah. consciously yeah. we incorporated that into it because Ruth Ruth and Joe they're my younger siblings I was already out um, I was studying at the time um, I'm finished studying now so I'm not in the schooling process anymore but the younger siblings are still and they definitely we started incorporating some of the things that we'd seen um, mm -hmm. it really does open your mind quite a lot to kind of have things like ideas to bounce off of when you see different people um doing different things so no we did yeah for sure. i think that's the beauty and of so the film is you're showing all these different styles you're showing that there's not just one way to do things that home education can't be defined in like oh this is what it is yeah definitely yeah uh, and also the the different reasons that people choose to home educate we were 
uh, hoping that by catching such a wide variety of people who do it for so many different reasons that somebody watching might be able to identify with one of those families, one of the children, one of the parents, one of the reasons, um, and not feel so isolated, you know? So, um, so, oh, that's me. Hey, that's what, that's what, that's what my child's like, or yeah. that's what we, that's, we live in a place like that, or, you know, like, and then be able to say, wow, so it's not just me, I'm not alone. There are other people out there who, who do that. I can get ideas from them and um, mm. be encouraged and inspired, you know, like, um, yeah. because there are many reasons why people choose to do this, you know, and oh, from yeah. different walks of life, di different, like, like you say, where you are, it's different. Like you're not running around in the rivers and like outside, you know, you're in a, a different space. So you have to have different resources and different things. So, um, yeah. yeah, there's so many different places that people do it in and so many, you know, we had black people that live, people that live wild outside on farms and then there's people who live in you know like cities you know and people who live in mm. you know the way that they use community and the way that they um were so um the the, the way they felt so strongly about family and yeah. connection and relationships and um all of that was common a common thread even though the families were so different you must so have read we, my mind. I was about to ask you about what common threads did you sort of, you know, what did you see that they had in common? And I think that connection in families is mm -hmm. quite a key one, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. you can't not have that, that if you're home educating. True. If you have your relationship with your parents and your siblings and your children, it, I mean, it's got to be there. Otherwise, yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, that's kind of half half the point of it. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably the point. And then, what are the other common traits? Um, well, the desire for freedom was the, was the yeah. biggest one. The, yeah. fa the family was one of the sub ones, I think, a, a big one. Um, but the desire for freedom was definitely, mm -hmm. and the passion for the freedom as well. Um, yes. Yeah. Feeling strongly about it, that the, the those parents are willing to fight for their children and what they what they think is is healthy and good for them, and mm. you know. Yeah, because yeah. you're you're also Definitely. facing sort of challenges from Parliament and so on, where they're wanting to put new laws into place and that kind of thing, aren't yeah. you? Mm. you no, know, there's always a little bit of a feeling of uh, us being aware and wary of that. Mm. Uh, but I don't think they, I don't think um, they're coming up against quite a big force. I yeah, I quite yeah, a lot of we, resistance. We are not involved. We're not involved in the nitty gritty politics of this and that and mm. and what have you. But um, yeah, from where, what we can see, we don't think it's it's not an easy task to take on the homeschoolers, at least in South Africa here, because there's a lot there's a lot of people who are doing it now. Definitely, um, lots so of people. Not, uh, I don't and, think it's gonna... and you'll see in the film in in the film we, we speak to people that were forefront of making of legalizing home education in South Africa and how they did fight for the freedom to home educate but also the the way that they speak about how parents are uh, really passionate about their children and doing what's in the best interest of their children and how it, the people that speak about that in the film um, and it's very interesting you can see it just near the end of the film they have that that part which is um, helps explain the, the way that parents feel about the freedom to be able to choose what's in the best interest for their kids. So you'll see that in the film. Um, yeah. And we, I have to just put in, in case we run, I don't know how long, much time we have, but. We're, it's an hour sort <laughs> of time. Okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, so we have time. Okay. Yep. Now I just like to bring things in, in case we don't have time. Now. <laughs> yeah. now, I don't know if you have a question. No, you, well, the only the other thing is that like with that connection and the family connection, the one th little thing that I've been saying more recently is just how I really think home education does away with the generation gap. Um, and I think, you know, for like a pair that parent child, you know, where whereas when children that are in school that are used to the adults being on the other side of the fence and then there's us. And with most home That's educating weird. families, there's far more collaboration between the different generations and working together. And that's a generalization. It might not be that for everybody, but mm -hmm. there is a different relationship because as a parent, you kind of have to be real with your kids. You can't 
can't keep up any anything else forever. You've just got to be real and be yourself as a as a parent. Yeah, I think yeah, it, it definitely depends on your style of home educating. Yeah. Um, I think. Oh, is it, is it Sorry, I was just looking at the side at questions. Yeah, so <laughs> we'll we'll get to so we'll have some time for questions after all those. At the moment, it's mainly comments and so on. Um, so, um, I want to talk a little bit about your. So, you actually had a proper. You gave yourselves a proper premiere. You booked a cinema yes. and you yeah. had a proper. And I did, was very happy to see you got your red carpet, Rushka. Yeah, <laughs> we did. Yeah. We, we got a good. We decided. We decided in honor of all of the people that allowed us into their homes and into their lives. We thought we must we must do it properly because it's a big deal. So and we were contemplating, should we have a red carpet? We didn't want to, um, I don't know. Oh, it, it, we added, were, we it were, added a great feeling. It, yes, felt, it, it was such a nice premiere. It yes. was amazing. We, so, we, yeah. It was lovely. So, so in, in honor of the, the, the work that was put in, the years of work that you put in, <laughs> And in honor Two of the people, well. that we thought we must, if we're going to have a launch and we're going to have a premium, we must do it properly. Yeah. So so we had the red carpet. It was black tie. We had our speeches. We had champagne. We didn't get to drink the champagne. We were too busy that night. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but the champagne was there. <laughs> and uh, we had the Q&A and we had the yeah. photographs and it was just fantastic. And uh, that's what I wanted to do put in in case we didn't have time is that um, we um, were so encouraged by the comments after the film. Um, wow. Um, the comments that people gave us helped. It, it, it almost hit the nail on the head as to what we were hoping to accomplish by the film. Um, uh, people came and they, they were, said things like, I've been homeschooling for so many years and um, I've been feeling um, like a little bit un, like uninspired or like it's been difficult and I've, I've been struggling through. And then after watching this, it just like uh, inspired me so much. I'm so excited. I've got all these ideas I want to go do. So there were people that said things like that, which was very encouraging, um, which is what we hoped would happen. And then people were um you know saying things like I've, I've been wanting to home educate but I didn't know if it was possible with my children at this age I didn't know if I could I didn't know how many people were there and now I, I feel you know like uh, strong enough or I feel confident enough to now go ahead mm. and things like that so with people who were because in essence the film was for people and for families, it was for people who are home educating and people who wanted to know about it. And it was supposed to have, a, it is supposed to have a positive impact, you know, yeah. informing, inspiring, encouraging. And we were very, very, very honored to have comments like that and also felt like a sigh of relief, like, wow, you get to do a project for three years, you get to work so hard. And then you get to accomplish what it is you wanted to accomplish. I mean, that is just that's amazing to me yeah that is just, yeah so well that's kind of like um you know we we've been to so the conference actually it's kind of interesting everything you're saying you wanted to accomplish through your film is what i try and accomplish through this conference um is to empower and equip people and encourage them and speak that courage into them and um and inspire them and um you know the thing is one of the topics that's come up at conferences is this thing of passion-led learning and yeah. project, there's another two in a project based learning. So essentially, what you were doing was a project, but you would have learned so much. It's all like self directed education at work while you're doing it. Yeah. It's your passion driving Absolutely. your learning and that learning yeah. curve that it takes you through because you've got a goal that you're working towards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, so we're doing something for other people, but. It's amazing how when you are serving other people, how inadvertently you get, let's say, blessed in a way, you know, like, yeah. uh, so the, 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 the film was for, for other people, but we were, we learned so much, we gained so much, we, um, so that's just so nice. Don't yeah. you love it when that happens? <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Yeah. And you're based down in Port Elizabeth, am I right? 
yeah, down Port that Elizabeth. down that way. Yes, Port Elizabeth, which is my old university town. Um, okay. and can, what are some of the places that you you went to? We took the garden route, so we travelled from Port Elizabeth. We captured our own community here. It's quite a large community in, in the Eastern Cape, Port Elizabeth, Eastern Cape, um, some of the surrounding areas. So we went up, we went through um, all along the garden route. So we traveled up that way. And then we stopped at all the different little places along that way, Otsua and a couple of other little places and then Cape Town itself. And then we took a separate trip up um, to Joburg and we got some stuff in there as well. So we kind of, yeah, in Pretoria. So we kind of covered those two those two lines because um, those were the people that either reached out to us or um, that we knew through other people or had gathered connections to um, and you could yeah, get them all in one place in one trip kind of thing yeah along yeah. the way trip, trip, yeah. trip, 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 trip. We actually, yeah. and then we also had a, a family who really wanted to say to say stuff you know they wanted to be part of it and they drove all the way down from another city you know which is like eight hour drive oh with wow seven of the kids yeah, they <laughs> but, drove all the way down and here. they were like we don't have to say we're coming over so, so that was really sweet you know um yeah <laughs> i think uh, i think obviously people really got excited and got totally got behind you on this project yeah, they did we definitely felt a quite yeah. a strong sense of support yeah especially uh, it's uh daunting thing to let a film crew into your house it's mm -hmm. quite strange and can feel like a bit invasive even if you know they're, they're doing something for a cause that you believe in it's still like hectic to let someone into your house and they boy they did it so willingly and yeah. so trustingly and yeah. they trusted us too yeah so yeah, we, yeah. we're so grateful for that trust yeah, yeah. Then, I, I did yeah. enjoy all the meals that you ate because there was quite a bit of Boy, focus. There's the quite meal. a bit of focus on the food. <laughs> There's lots of food on there. Hey? I love food so yeah. much. I think that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, uh, there must be a mention made of um, in the film of the uh, sound track that when yes. when she speaks about post-production I don't think everybody quite understands how much is involved in post-production so that should be like editing everything that should be doing the sound that would be doing um the animation if there is any animation that would be doing um, there's a lot 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 involved well yeah so I just, just edit short videos and that. that can take me hours so no. I get it <laughs> yeah so editing itself usually you have a big team of people that do yeah. it you know but the sound um uh in the sound it's mostly local musicians if you you if you watch it i don't know if you notice how nice the soundtracks are and how nice yeah the I, I've, I've picked the up on comments we also got it. yes sound makes a huge difference yeah. and it gives an amazing feeling and now the music in there is local so, uh, there is somebody from london who happens to be um a member of our family who's an amazing musician who we asked for some tracks she lives in london yeah. and uh, another member of our family who's also home educated who lives in in america yeah. who's also her we voice. try to use everything local and either people who were home educated or who were local south africans to in, like push like that yeah. feeling of um south africanness yeah uh, and yeah well, and people that were also home educated you yeah. know the, the sound and so we got tracks so people donated their tracks to us because to buy soundtracks is so no. expensive yeah, if anyone has made i think one track we were looking at was three hundred thousand rand wow. to buy. Three hundred thousand. no was it more than that no 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 we're close it was three it was three k no the one we bought was three k but the one we wanted was uh, so really? yeah. three hundred thousand. Well, I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah. No, I must have blanked that from my memory. I think she blanked out. So we bought one track uh, that cost three thousand rand. That, that was the one track that we bought. Then you changed a little yes, bit. Yes, so that was a jazz things. track. All of the other tracks she wrote or um, we got from people. So um, when you're watching the film, like take notes of the music. Like um, yeah, it's very, I have I have very been, very been noticing the music. Hey. Definitely. Did you know? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So everything has there's lots of details in there that you might not notice straight away, or you might might never notice that all have a significant or like a reason for being there. Nothing is an accident. Well, it's that's really proper like, proper artistry, actually. 
because proper the artists back in the day the always put something. Unless it's a happy accident. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I said proper artists back in the day used to always have things that had meaning in them. You know, there would always be like little symbols yeah. and little things that are meaningful. So, so I said it's like proper artistry when you're thinking like that. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot involved. Um, yeah. So I have got a question for you from Amy. She said, what advice can you give to home educators if they want to use your film to inspire their own homegrown family production for educational purposes? So I think possibly it's well, like, so say if somebody wants to make a film here, you know, what sort of things could you, you know, like, well, okay, she's talking about like home movies almost. So if you wanted to create a little home home movie, about home education, are there little tips um, or, or things that could inspire them to uh, um, around that? Amy, maybe you should articulate that Sorry, yourself. Just better. to be more specific, would this be like? If, would so, this be like if the kids? Sorry, Amy. Yeah. So you know how um, kids really like to make their own stories up. Well, as kids get older. Um, something we like to encourage them um, to do is to take on uh, like the role of either scripting or acting or lighting and things like that. Is, it, is there anything you can kind of give them for advice to just make those first few steps to making their own films family, you know, just really, you know, personal to them and maybe document their own little journeys or something? Um, best? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I mean, one of the first things, this is probably more technical, so, but one of the, mm -hmm. the things you, you can, I mean, technology is so advanced now, mm -hmm. phones are amazing, you don't need a huge, big, fancy situation to make a, a cool, interesting little project work. Mm -hmm. You can... You can use even if even if the footage is is lower quality or whatever. You, there's creative ways to make it look like that was on purpose or that was cool. The way it's done is is on purpose. Um, yeah, but and there's like there's a, there's a lot of courses online that they can look at if they're thinking of um, going into that. Or but making short films is actually a, a very clever way to and a very interesting and stimulating way to teach kids how to story tell. Uh, and storytelling is is quite important, I think, in, in daily life and w in the workplace as well. Um, coming up with creative narratives to either um, speak about a project or uh, you know create a new project or a thing that they're working on as an entrepreneur, something like that. So it's actually it's a it can, it's a small thing, but learning how to tell short stories um, within film, and especially if it's something that you know about and are passionate about, like home education, um, you can learn a lot from it. I would definitely recommend um, kids kids learn about that because it's it's visual it's visual storytelling, it's audio uh, audio visual audio visual storytelling, and that's great. That's a, a brilliant that's answer, a actually, Rebecca. I think it's a brilliant answer because also the technology, as you say. What's on phones now is um, exceeds what we had, you know, back like 20 years ago on, you yeah. know, in some of our, our digital and electronic devices. And you can actually get, you know, I, I used to say to my children, if you if you really loved it, you would be doing it. So, you know, sometimes your kids say, oh, I want to be a this or I want to be a that. And so well, if you know, you just do it, don't wait. Mm -hmm. Use what you have, yeah. and then you can improve as you go along. And uh, I mean, this might be a good time to ask how how you got into filmmaking. How did your interest develop? Oh my goodness! I um, I, I started uh, showing interest in that at very young. I was probably about six six. Months. Yeah, but I didn't think it would go this way. I I was always fascinated in that kind of a thing. Um, we had access to like a small little home camera, and I started. Um, started making like short little, little silly little videos and things when I was younger um, and then went through high school and kind of forgot about that and then uh, later on I was accepted into um, a private university for film and I was like wow well that makes sense doesn't it 
he was. You know, so, yeah, my, my brain likes to work like that. There's a lot of physical aspects that have to do with form um, and a lot of creative aspects and the merging of those two. That's I love that. And that's mm -hmm. definitely how my head works. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed studying it. It was mm -hmm. so interesting. I uh, majored in sound engineering, sound design and sound engineering. Um, but I work now full time as a independent contractor for video production. So it's, it's all of it, all aspects of it. Um, so that's how I got into it. But yeah, I was definitely given the, the, the space to pursue that though, which I think is the important part. I, within my home education, I was given room to experiment and move around and, and go into university earlier. I went into university when I was 17. Um, I didn't do my trick. Um, I was accepted into the university via portfolio, a portfolio that I had built up um and they accepted me in so i didn't i didn't do my matric year um and that was great as well i mean that's really cool mm -hmm. yeah for, i had one the, extra year but still it was, it yeah. was really nice. for the british really. audience a matric so, would be like the equivalent of a levels it would be like what you'd finish by the age of 18 yeah. in, academically yeah exactly yeah the final year. so the year that she got accepted she had just enrolled was just about to enroll for her a levels yeah and then the week when we were enrolling they phoned and said can we have her in our university and then oh how wonderful um, so she was about to do her a levels and then we were like well you know well, why? you're going to get a degree <laughs> why do you need to yeah you so it's that's not that's not the route for everybody, but it just so happened to work out. It works. Great for me. So, oh my. Yeah. But it is another way of thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you think it, it's a completely another way of thinking. You yeah. Know? You you don't have to have certain things. Yeah. Like if you started your own company when you're 16, you know, and you're yeah. hiring people and you've got a company, then why should you? Why do you need to have? The yes, exactly. Exactly. Job? No, it's like uh, for people to hear something like that, they go into like a panic because it's it's very strange when you're in the system to hear things like this you know so but um i just wanted to add you know um she was saying when she was young if your kids want to do you know like make their own films there are so many online free oh, yeah. video editing programs so when when they were young we uh, downloaded all of those programs mm. you had you take that program show them one or two little things you know like cut, clip drag the thing in, here is this, yeah, sit with this, take your video, this is how you plug it in, boom. Yeah. So those were free. She she sat, she was allowed to sit for as long as she wanted. She made her own home wow. videos. Well, you did, I was quite strict with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's I needed it. <laughs> yeah, it was good, it benefited you. Each child's different. But the point is that she had the time to be able to do things like that. And what holds people back, what holds parents back and kids is that they, tend to sometimes think that no they're too young they i'm not going to try this with them because they're so young when they're 15 i will give them an editing thing but if they look interested and they're excited when they say it and they come and they're asking and they want to yeah. look and they want to know like i didn't ever say no you're not the right age you know it, the book says you must be 15 it was just she wants to do this now when somebody wants to do something, you get everything that they can possibly yeah. need. If it's something that's in their best interest alone, they, oh, they want to. No, obviously, obviously. Yeah. No, obviously. obviously. Yeah. So, I think, so when, I think, I think, I think yes, it's also sort of appropriate, like you're looking at what's appropriate at that time, because yeah. you get some children who change their mind no, in five well, minutes. I'm talking about learning. <laughs> I'm talking about yeah, learning things, you know, things yeah. that they like if they want yeah. to study linguistics when they're 10 or they want to study film yeah. when they're 10, you know, like. You seven. run with it. They don't have to necessarily wait. Like in school, yeah. you know, no, you can't do that. You're only in grade seven, you have to read till you're grade eight. You don't have to, it's a different way of thinking, yeah. you see. So um that was just yeah, yeah. that was it's, helpful. I think yeah. the thing is, is the, the thing that I also from the bit that I have watched of the film was that it seems like um in South Africa, young people can have opportunities that don't necessarily involve academics um, and going that traditional academic route would was you know did you was that something that, that you I noticed i don't think that's specific to south africa yeah, yeah. i think that is a homeschool thing because yeah well i think here they people get a bit stuck on the gcse's and you've got to have this and you've got to have that so it can be it, it can be a limitation 
they are roots the where same, portfolio yeah. yeah okay okay it's the same it's the same but it depends on the child and what they want to do some yeah. kids love academic they yeah. want to be a lawyer they want to be a doctor they want to be whatever yeah. they want to go to university they want to take the academic route um and so you must make sure that you yeah. can get them yeah. to be able to do what they want to do and that all just depends on the child yeah. so i don't think it's specific to our country i think i think that it's specific to a type of child yeah. but you also have you to know? be careful of there's a lot of Look, it is a big responsibility to home educate, and it is it is a big deal, and it should be a big deal. You shouldn't take it lightly because it, it is like you're raising a, a human being who's going to yeah. go into the world, and you want them to be success successful and um, okay, yeah. yeah, and happy. So you know, and to, to understand that children change, so you could start, "Mommy, I want to be a doctor," and then you get to fifteen, you're like, "Well, actually, I would <laughs> rather build." You know, like I'd rather My work house. on a construction site, and you know, so like it, it, people change, and yeah. like recognizing that fluidity of children, especially children, because children are very um, moldable and versatile, at a, especially at a younger age, um, and all mm. throughout until you hit like I guess, yeah. Yeah. ish you very um yeah so recognizing that and not trying to push them in a, in a specific direction i think the best idea is to just set them up as strong as you can yeah. the best base so they can choose later on Anything. whichever way they want to go yeah. so they well, I'll, I'll, handle that and handle that and handle that mm -hmm. and they'll be all right they'll figure it out like they'll be okay uh, i yeah. did so love one, one of your one of the people you interviewed um i think it's still in bosch who was studying to be a civil engineer I think it was and she was saying how you could always she yeah. could always tell another home educated young person basically because they they were the ones that were thriving oh, yeah she was cool yeah. Yeah. yeah and she so yeah. she could she could see something different in the other home educated kids in terms of like their confidence and their just kind of being I suppose yeah. maybe at peace with themselves yeah mm. Yeah, yeah they, in the film, uh, they show a lot of that and why that happens and what, uh, um, I don't want to give away what happens no. in the film. The people haven't seen it, but in the film, they go through that, you know, and, the, yeah. and what's nice is that you get to listen to the children mm -hmm. um, themselves. You get, to, you get to listen to children who have already, or are adults who were home yeah. educated, and you get to listen to people who are who home educated and are parents with their own children. Yes, that's educated. right, yes. Because if, if you want to learn about home education, there's no point. I mean, there is a point, but it's much more useful to talk to the parents and the children. Yeah. Because parent, the parent can say all these things, but in essence, people want to meet the kids. Like, how are these kids going to turn out? You know? yeah. like, can't we just see what's going on? You know, like, so because you can say as much as you want, but you actually want to see yeah you you want to see yeah. what how well the proof of the up. pudding is in the eating right <laughs> you know that saying there's, there's a yeah. saying about the proof of the pudding is in the eating yes you know you only yes. know when you've got and that's why actually like yeah. at, at the moment in the uk where they want people to like they want to be able to assess children and you've got to know their progress all along and actually in yeah. a home educating environment that's not really appropriate because children yeah. might show signs of very little going on and then next week they cover three months worth of something in a, you know in a week and it's yeah. like not um because that's actually the way we learn as adults we don't just go along at the same pace all the time we go through spurts and then we go through sort of consolidation yeah. times and yeah. all of that and uh, i think that um i think that that sort of you do kind of have to wait and see how they turn out when they grow up and i'm just always praying please let it pay yeah. off <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will pay. You have to pray a lot. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so um there was something I wanted to go back to about the film. So now you've released the film. It's uh you're you've it's available to buy. Mm. Um and you know, so that we, we we need to actually put a link, I think, when on the page. And you've actually on the uh, on the conference site, you've now got your little ad. So you've got your little exhibitors page. 
where people can go and find out more about the documentary itself and if they want to order it, if they want to buy it. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think there's so much work gone into it. And I think, um, you know, that we we want to just encourage you, uh, you know, and that you know, this might lead on to, to other bigger projects uh, for you, Rebecca. And I think, uh, you know, you pro you've got a great future because even, even making this film is something that goes on your... Um, uh, have you set up an IMDb page yet? You know what I'm, IMDb is where all the like movie people put up the um, you have their profiles and you can list your film on there and you need to list your skills um I'll have to I'll have to send you some information on there but you can you know you can then have that credit to your your name all your work um and yeah for sure yeah it's kind of like where where you know movie stars put their profile but if you've been involved in filmmaking you can go and have a listing there and you should have a listing Absolutely. there wow. yeah cool. yeah so um i wondered if there were yeah. any other questions from um Joanna or vanessa or nick if you've got anything you have you any of you got kids that are interested in filmmaking that you'd like to ask a question okay Joanna, you want to ask go on <laughs> who's coming don't be shy oh. <laughs> um yeah lovely to hear this and intrigued i really need to go see it now my favorite documentary so far uh, was Being and Becoming. Have you heard of it? It's um, a French one, yeah. yes. Yeah. Etre oh, de oh, oh. Yeah, I really liked it and it encouraged me and my husband also thought, okay, let's try this. <laughs> I had to convince him, I guess. Uh, so John Holt <laughs> and, and that documentary and we were off. Um, so it's very much needed to have a good documentary and a good book. <laughs> um, yeah, I wonder, do you have other um, famous documentary that, or not famous, I don't know, favorite documentaries that you'd recommend or that inspired you or? On home education. Or or others, if if appropriate. No, not really. And not, and not on home education specifically. They aren't really. Um, really. There are but are, are there any other films or filmmakers yeah. that have inspired you with yeah. their style? Or... Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> I will say this. I am, um, I like the idea of, I like looking up to people and, um, you know, other people who have, have been big in the industry and see, see what they've done. And um, I have taken uh, uh, interest in a couple of documentaries I've seen, but I'm not one of those people who uh, can memorize the names of um, the, the directors or the people involved. The people say, well, you're involved, why don't you know this actor and this person? <laughs> I've gone and forgotten that all that mattered to me was like what I saw and what went into yeah. my head and then I was like wow that's that was great mm -hmm. um so I can't uh, sorry I, I can't remember you know, if right. I saw them I, oh well I love them and it's in my you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I can't say I suppose, there's any particular one I a, a side question is yes I guess my my daughter draws a lot and she'd like to uh, turn things into animations um be, oh, between yeah. four and um just se seven she said please sit down and watch ponyo with me i don't know if you've heard of ponyo from studio Gim gimbley uh japan no a i haven't but it sounds good. sort of anime anyway yes. Yes. Stuff. and and i i can see she's then that she would yeah we love ponyo. uh i can <laughs> see, see that there's there's a visual gift in her and both for drawing yeah. for animation she's done little stop motion animation and this and that cool. but i don't know who she can learn from and whether there's a, a whole channel of tutorials and if you have any such clues just pop them in in the yeah okay, yeah look i the link so much stuff on the internet i promise you you if you go look you will find it there i promise you and animation is really cool if she's interested in that man that's something that she can she can do really really well in especially if she's talented artistically mm -hmm. because you can work anywhere you can you can so long as you have a system with you you're able to get um jobs and employment from countries all over the world mm -hmm. um and animation is definitely taken off as one of the biggest industries in the world yeah, right now so. that's true 
because they, yeah, those creative industries are now becoming more important because of technology and more and more people needing, like wanting something on their website or wanting, uh, you know, like yeah. it, it, it's just in demand. I've got it. My daughter's going to be studying illustration and animation. Uh, when cool. she's finished her college course and uh, she's already like producing little things and um, possibly Jana I could ask her if she's got any great suggestions for you as well um, so um, Amy's also been mentioning something and I said she can maybe look into it for you is that we have a, a film festival here in the UK every like September called Into Film and they oh, often excellent. will they will often like air certain films and I just said to Amy why didn't because Amy's hoping to be an ambassador for them and perhaps she can go and find out how you could who you need to talk to. Oh, we know, would to, love it. We would appreciate that so much. Oh, thanks. We Thank want to try you. and reach as many people as we can with this. Yes. So yeah. the idea to enter film festivals. Mm. Yeah. We're gonna think, start well the, the into it. film one they do that um I was just going to say, into film, they actually play, like they invite schools to come and watch these films at the cinema. And oh, you can, wow. and um, they they do all different kinds of films. So they do a lot of sort of independent things. So so Amy, I hope you, she's actually put the um, the website in the uh, chat. But if you do speak to anyone there, Amy, have a little, you know, put in a word. <laughs> um, so let's let's just maybe yeah, have like a... Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I just wanted you. to say that that is one of the reasons also why, I mean, we would have loved to have the documentary for free. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, we would have loved to just give it away. But we, um, even though we were funded, we didn't quite cover the cost from the yes. funding. Yes, yes. Um, we were a lot over. And all of the platforms that we use and to enter film festivals actually cost quite a bit. And because we're in South yeah. Africa... And we have the rand. <laughs> yeah. No, I know, you know, and I, I think that yeah. we have to honor the time and the skill, you know, because we can't yeah. I think, you know, for me that's that's why, you know, I don't have a problem coming to if I can buy your film and I can do that, then I'll do that because that yeah. you know, you've put hours and hours, you could be working a full time job somewhere earning money. Yeah. All those hours. So you know? the, yeah, so she she um, literally worked for two and a half years, eight to five, every single day for free. Yeah. So uh, me as a producer, <laughs> so okay. she was willing to just do it for free. But to cover the cost, to enter the film festivals and to actually honor the work, as you said, yeah. and uh, pay respect to the hours and the years of work, yeah. um, it's the right thing to do. I so, think so. Um, so yeah, I just want to say that if we could, we would have sold, given yeah. it away because it is a resource for people, but we did make it as cheap as possible. Yeah. So yeah, the money's going to help it, us. It doesn't we cost can boost more. posts with it. Yeah. We're going to use it to, we have to keep the website going. So we have to keep that yes. running. Yeah. It's going to, all that money is going to help. Uh, this yes. and it doesn't cost yeah. more than a new release DVD here. And I think people can at least yeah. um, contribute that because it's a positive message about home education that we want to get out. And that benefits us too. Did anyone else have questions? Vanessa or Nick, did you have a question? Vanessa, did you want to say something? You're welcome to unmute. Hi, yes, I just wanted to um, check if you will have a link for buying the movie. So um, um, let me just put that in. Uh, let me just get onto the chat here. So um, what what is the, I've actually have got it open, but perhaps what yeah, is Vimeo. the website? So the film is on Vimeo. Oh, yes. Um, I'll, are you finding the link there? I'm going to go and have a look and see if I can just get it for yeah, you. So. Can. If they go to the link, um, I'm on the autoplay link. I don't know if that's the best place for me to, um, because that'll probably take them through the payment thing, wouldn't it? Um, um, I can also find, well, you, uh, while I look, you can ask Breeze a question and so that the conversation can keep going. Yeah, so yeah, we'll find it for you, don't Because yeah, this is the I'll one find. I've got, which is an autoplay one, which I'm sure would take them through the buying anyway. So, uh, Vanessa, okay. have a quick quick click and see what it does. See if it gets uh, you where you yeah, need to I'll, go. That's a good I'll, idea. Um, I'll have a look just after. But um, I'm actually from Port Elizabeth, is my home city originally. Um, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. 
as last day in November. But um, I, uh, I, I home educate my three daughters. My eldest is 15, and she's really keen on um, one, you know, building up to becoming a director one day, film director, and she's very interested in script wow. writing. So, um, you know, but it's, it seems like it's a very traditional approach that she needs to take. So she's looking at an English degree and then working towards getting into film industry through script writing. But yeah. I guess like what you're saying is quite yeah. encouraging that you can just jump straight in if you find the right opportunities. And it's, you obviously you kept yeah. alert and aware of what was available. Well, you can, and the quicker the better. Um, I've noticed uh, for, for me, um, in terms of uh, apl applying for or, or getting asked to work for companies or, or working for for companies in the industry that I enjoy, which is which is film and video production, they really they value experience. Um, mm -hmm. Well, it's nice to have a a, 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 de a degree behind you and things like that that set you up nicely. Um, but probably the most important thing is experience. So the sooner mm -hmm. you can get out and do it, just go. Like I. And you, you're never always going to know exactly what you're doing. I mean, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. So you, mm. you're always learning. Everything is a learning process. So as soon as you kind of get, it took me time to get my head around that. I thought, man, I have to know exactly what I'm doing before I can get into this. Um, mm. But as soon as you understand that no one knows exactly what they're doing, it, everyone's yeah. just just gunning for it and going for it and, and doing their best. And mm. the faster you can get your head around that and just go for it, um, the more knowledge you'll gather and more experience you'll gain. And yeah, you can seriously just shoot, shoot for the moon. We've got so much stuff on our side. The technology is so advanced. We've mm -hmm. got the whole of the internet. We've got, honestly got no excuse these days to, mm -hmm. to not just shoot for the moon because we, yeah. we've, we've got so, so much. Yeah, so I think the work is there for those who want it. You know, yeah. The, yeah. it is there and, and being able to create and everything. So yeah. um, I think oh, that's really encouraging. Sorry. 15. 15. Yeah. Yes. A, a nice a nice thing also is that, as I said before, you don't have to, like Bruce was saying, you don't have to wait. But a, a, a practical way of not waiting is that she can um, start with small jobs now. You know, like mm. your friend's birthday party that she wants for, or somebody's wedding, yeah. and all that. That uh. she could just go and do for free and start setting up things and showing people and start and building a portfolio mm. because that would be proof of work. As she was saying, like having the experience behind you, you don't have to wait to have experience. She can build up a massive portfolio from when she's young. And when she goes to mm. somebody, she whips out this portfolio and People want to see what can you do. That's what they want to see straight away. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Some people have um, a degree but no proof of work. You still want to see what that person can do. You always yes. want to see what they can do. Yeah. So she could have a, a bigger portfolio than someone who's just finished university by the time she's yeah. 18. And mm -hmm. she doesn't have to choose. She can do both. She can yeah. get the experience and yeah. get a degree. There's no reason why she has to do either one or the other. She do can do both. Yeah, she can do both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I want to I want to add in for Vanessa that in this country the college system I've made quite extensive use of it because there's vocational courses, like there are colleges that will do sort of film production and that kind of thing, and a lot of them will accept a portfolio, a strong portfolio, and overlook um, GCSEs if she doesn't have any, you know. Um, they, it, if you've got a strong portfolio and you go in for an interview and you show them what you've got, they often um, they love the home ed kids because they they are also passionate about what they're doing. Um, so whereabouts do you live, Vanessa? I'm in Cheshire. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So you kind mm -hmm. of need to go and have a look and see if there's courses near you uh, for anything like that. But but a portfolio is absolutely worth its weight in gold and the one thing we can give mm. our children as home educators is, is the gift of time to build it up okay. time to develop and to mm -hmm. really uh, create stuff that they can take with them um and uh, i mean rebecca it was amazing that you got that offer at uni based on your portfolio mm. fantastic you know yeah, no, that was that was a big blessing. That mm. sometimes okay. just working your office, that was yeah, that was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, um, we did earlier on cover like why the reason for the documentary. So because we're kind of out of time, um, I'm going to end the recording there. But uh, hang on for a minute, okay? Sure.
Sure. Bye. Thank you.